So today I'm on my way to the Oregon coast and I was going to cut through central Oregon planning on just passing through but I couldn't help but stop. It is so beautiful in this area with this fresh dusting of snow. I've driven into this area of BLM land just kind of looking for some forest scenes to try to take advantage of this beautiful beautiful untouched snow and it's always challenging trying to hone in on a subject. So what I've been doing is trying to find interesting trees that are kind of standing out from the, the, the typical pine trees that we have here. For this particular shot, I've been looking at this one particular pine tree that for whatever reason has this really cool bend to it. I also love the way that when the sun pokes out from behind those clouds, how some of these ice crystals are sparkling when they get backlit. It's so beautiful in here. I'm just gonna kind of wander around, see if I can find something before hitting the road. So something that I'm finding useful in this particular area is I've kind of found a spot where I can scoot back and zoom into a longer focal length. And that does several things. It allows me to zoom in and eliminate the sky that's poking out back there which makes the, you know, the glistening snow on the branches the brightest thing. But it also, that, that longer focal length kind of simplifies the scene and compresses it all together. And I kind of pick out smaller bits and pieces of what I'm, what I'm liking. Right now there's one particular uh, old dead branch that is coated in snow and it kind of has this, I don't know, drippy shape to it that I really like. And I'm trying to have that fairly prominent in the scene by zooming in and having it fill up more of the frame. So you can probably tell by the sound, I am doing a three shot bracket. I do my three shot brackets typically two stops apart, which means that my second image is actually two stops darker than the first image, and then the third image is two stops brighter. That way I can recover the highlights that are bouncing off of that really bright snow, because you know I don't want to underexpose the shot too much, then I'll end up with noisy shadows. So I'm just gonna recover some of those brightest highlights with that darker image using luminosity mass in Photoshop. Well, considering that this was not part of the plan, it was a very beautiful little pit stop. I think it's time to hit the road. I'm gonna make something hot to drink and then we'll continue on to the coast.
This is one of those times where I don't really know which direction to shoot. This particular viewpoint, I've actually recorded a video here a couple years ago now where I had terrible light, pretty boring conditions. Today I have what's shaping up to be beautiful light and really dramatic conditions. Right now we have about a 15 foot swell which is making the waves quite energetic and it's just really exciting and powerful and beautiful. It's, it's a good kind of night. So right now I have a composition set up with these kind of cascading cliff sides looking north from this particular vantage point. I'm using a wireless shutter release which allows me to just watch the action and when I see an interesting wave, I take photos. I don't have to be standing right on my, on my camera because I'm kind of multitasking here. Very helpful. So when I am in these situations where there's multiple shots to be had, I try to develop a game plan. You know, I'm trying to think about what's going to be the most photogenic during the different times, the different kinds of light we might get. So right now I'm doing these fast shutter speed shots looking north. I also want to grab a shot if we get any kind of light poking out and hitting the cliffside back here behind me. So I think that's probably going to be more of a longer shutter speed. Maybe throw on a three stop ND, something like that. And then finally, we have lots of drama happening in the sky back this way. So that'll probably be what I end with once the sun starts to set, if we get any color in those beautiful clouds above. Even if we don't, I'm still gonna take that shot because there's a lot of drama in that direction because that's where the light source is coming from. So now I've turned and I'm shooting south down the beach now and I'm hopeful that we're going to get some of the big sets that were happening just a few minutes ago while we have this light that is poked out. The light is golden and beautiful and when you combine those high, that warm glow with the beautiful foam as it recedes off of the cliff face, that's what I'm hoping to capture anyway. I'm actually got my 24 to 105 on and I'm zooming in on the cliff face and I'm going with a slightly slower exposure. I'm, I'm at about almost a half second now and I'm trying to really emphasize the water cascading off of that rock face. I'm gonna try some different shutter speeds, decide later what I like best, but I'm just hopeful that the waves and the light will happen at the same time. We'll see. That's beautiful, so good. I shot a variety of different shutter speeds and that's one of the things that I always you know, recommend to people is don't try to decide now what looks good. Just try to give yourself options once you get back to the computer and you're actually seeing a large version of your photo. Decide then, so go home with options. Right now I'm doing a three minute long exposure. The light is done so I'll only use the water from this particular exposure if I like it. If I don't like it, it's I won't use it. So. You guys will now see what I ended up liking from today's shoot. Thank you guys so much for watching. Here's the photos that we got, and we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.